Hi, this is Kristen Dorgalo, and we're here live from the third White House Science Fair. This is our first live webcast from the Science Fair, and today we're celebrating over 100 students who are winners from 40 states and 45 different science, technology, engineering, and math science competitions. And I'm here right now with Bill Nye, the science guy, and LeVar Burton. Welcome, guys. What are you excited about for today? Science. I want to. I want to see the science that these kids are working on. They uh, got some cool stuff. I yeah. was walking around just a few minutes ago. This. This is the future, and what I like to remind everybody is the economic benefit of science. What is everybody talking about? What are we right. obsessed with? Three things: jobs and economy. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Yep. That's right. So if you want jobs, that you got to have science. You got to invest in science, and these people are going to be the engineers of tomorrow. That will dare I say it change the world. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Yeah. LeVar, what are you excited about for today? Well, I, I think it's remarkable, number one, that the president is really honoring these student scholars this, very much the same way he would if you were an NCAA sports championship team, coming to the White House and, uh, and, and getting an opportunity to get some face time yeah. with the president is really big for these kids, and I, I think that's great. So do you think we should meet one of these kids? I would love to. All right, so we've got Sarah here. Sarah, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. So tell us about your project. My work is on algae biofuels. So uh, the idea with algae biofuels is that algae actually produce these oils that can be converted into a fuel you can put straight into your diesel engine. So right now the problem with bioenergy is that it's not quite economically feasible and we need a better source of this, these oils than uh, crops like soybeans. So that's where algae comes in. And my work was uh, focused on using guided evolution to develop populations of algae with more oil. So it's a better choice. These are the same organisms that make swamp gas, right? Yep, yep. So instead of one carbon, you get a whole somehow. Exactly, yeah. So the idea is that, you know, they're just producing these fats normally. That's exactly what they are. They're fats, these long carbon chains. And um, if you can just get them to change their metabolism a little bit, then they'll produce more of them. How did you do that? So um, I actually took a sort of different approach than some other people have been taking in that uh, I let Mother Nature do all the work for me. Um, I used a chemical that killed cells with low oil production, so that forced cells to adapt to produce more oils, higher oil production. What chemical kills cells that don't produce a lot of um, It's actually oil. an herbicide that um, I chose because it specifically targets um, an enzyme in the, in the uh, oil production pathway. Now, Sarah, I, I understand you have a kind of an unorthodox laboratory. I do, yeah. Um, so my laboratory is actually under my bed. Um, <laughs> Your bed's uh, uh, somehow, yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've got a loft bed, uh -huh. and then I've got a bunch of flasks um, underneath it. And, and how did your parents feel about yeah, that? Exactly. They're happy that I moved everything out of the kitchen. But listen, I'll tell, you what else, I'll tell you what else they're happy about. I saw you in Science News. You got a $100,000 scholarship. Is that right? That's right. It's Where are you going to go? I'm going to MIT. It's back east. I hear that's a good school. It's it's a. I'm very excited to go to MIT. <laughs> well, they're they're lucky to have you, Sarah. Thanks. They're lucky to have you. And are you excited to be here at the White House today? What are you looking forward to most? I'm I'm so excited to be here. I'm I'm really excited to um to, to meet the president again, actually, because I saw him one one time before. But um, I'm I think just seeing all the other uh, young scientists from across the nation is just like really really awesome and inspiring to see that other people besides me care about this stuff. So. What grade are you in, Sarah? I'm a senior. A senior. On your way to MIT. Yeah. Good for you. All right. Well, thank you. For those of you just joining, we're here at the third White House Science Fair, and we're doing our first live webcast. Sarah, congratulations on getting to this point. Awesome. Thanks. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you. Cool. Way to go. All right. Next up, we have Easton La Chapelle. How are you? Nice Great. to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Easton, how are you? This is Bill Navarre. Good to see you. You're from Colorado? I am. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Yep. What's yep. your project? Um, well, I created this, this robotic arm that's controlled using your brain. Hmm. Um, and my, my <laughs> end-all goal for this is to create an affordable prosthetic for, for everyday use for, um, for really anybody that needs it. And uh, actually, the, the main thing that really got me towards prosthetics was uh, last year at the State Science Fair in Colorado, this seven-year-old girl came up to me and she had a prosthetic limb from the elbow to the fingertip hmm. with one motion, open, close, and one sensor. I started talking to her parents more about this, and just that alone was eighty thousand dollars, wow. which is a lot of money. And she was seven at the time, so she'd need about two or three of those within her lifetime um, because she keeps growing. 
and that was kind of the aha moment for me. I was already um, started working with robotic hands, robotic arms, and uh, it just crossed platforms perfectly with that. And uh, my, my, my end-all goal is to create an affordable prosthetic for everyday use, and it's all controlled with your brain um, based off thoughts and also facial, gesture, facial, facial gestures and blinking, a series of patterns, um, and also a muscle uh, sensor on the foot. And combine all that together, and you get a really accurate control system that you can really use for, to control anything. So how many, how many movements does, does your arm have? Uh, Open and closed? Yeah, but, uh, but no, no, no. More it's bells it's and a whistles? full robotic arm up the shoulder, and it's, it's wow. comparable uh, to human strength-wise, wow. weight-wise, and functionality. So um, pretty, pretty close to the, the same degrees of freedom. Um, but during all this, I really realized how remarkable a human arm is and just how, how crazy everything happens. And how it complicated has, how, it is. Yeah, and yeah. And the sensors, it's, just, it's amazing. So how, what powers this thing? Um, I actually use servo motors as the main uh, actuator for, but for each of the I fingers. Mean, upstream, was there a battery? What? Yeah, um, that's all within a bicep. All electronics, all the batteries are within a bicep. And I have about a 5,000 milliamp hour battery within a bicep. And uh, that, that could power the arm for a good you know, half day to a day um, of continuous use from all the motors. 5,000 milliamp hours in the bicep. Yeah, it's amazing. Nice Did you it's have a 3D printer there. before this? Was this your first 3D printing project? Uh, no, I actually have two 3D printers in my room. Um, I, I work out of <laughs> my room. I, have, I pretty much have a bed in the corner, and it's I start to expand. But, uh, yeah, uh, 3D printing is really, really cool. It's a really cool technology that's starting to get really big and it's starting to get more affordable. So is the final product plastic? Um, it's it? all made of ABS plastic, mm -hmm. um, but that that's... That's like the best way, I, I think. Uh, either way, you have to have some kind of exoskeleton or, or some kind of mm. skeleton uh, that puts the silicone skin around. Mm. And um, it's just a lightweight. It's, it's durable. It's easy to replace. Um, it's affordable. So, yeah, it's, I think it's a good choice. Yeah. Well, thank you, Easton. What are you excited about here at the White House today? Um, well, this is actually the farthest east I've been, so just even being here is an experience, let alone the White House yeah. and all sorts of different things. And, of course, meeting these crazy, awesome people. <laughs> so, What are your plans for college, Easton? Um, well, my business has actually really taken off with all this. Um, it's kind of something I never really planned. Right. Um, but definitely college is in the future. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a junior right now, so I, I think yeah, I need to start fine. thinking. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So Venture capitalist knocking on your door already? Actually, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Con congratulations. <laughs> well, congratulations. Ethan, thank you very That's much. Cool, yeah. Way to go. So for go. those of you just joining, we're here at the third White House Science Fair. I'm here with LeVar Burton and Bill Nye. And it's Earth, Day. it's Earth Day. It's Earth Day, y'all. It is Earth Day. In fact, it's behind Earth us Day. right now, we've got a lot of uh, Earth science projects and environmental science projects that are going to be really cool for the president to check out in a little bit. We're ready to meet our next student, Jack Andraka. Amazingly inspirational story. Jack, I'm Kristen. Great to meet you. Jack, hi. Morning, Jack. How are you? So your tell us about your project. News. Uh, so essentially what I've created is a three-cent method to detect pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, and lung cancer. That takes five minutes. It's 100% accurate so far, but also it can detect the cancers in the earliest stages when someone has close to 100% chance of survival. And so it could lift the pancreatic cancer survival rate from 5.5% to close to 100%. And it can be broadly applied to really any disease, ranging from Alzheimer's to heart disease, other forms of cancer, even HIV AIDS. How does it work? So essentially what you have is these long, thin pipes of carbon, carbon nanotubes, and they're an atom thick and one fifty thousandth the diameter of your hair. However, despite their size, they have these incredible properties. They're kind of like the superheroes of material science. And so then I was actually sitting in biology class reading about these, and there are these things called antibodies, essentially molecules that only react with one specific protein, in this case, a cancer biomarker. And what you do is you kind of weave them into this network of carbon nanotubes, such that you have a network that only reacts with one protein. But also, it will change its electrical properties based on the amount of protein present. In other words, a way to detect pancreatic cancer. And I just measured that with an ohmmeter and some sewing needles. So, Jack, what was your inspiration for doing this work? I actually became interested in pancreatic cancer because a close family friend died of it. And then what I realized is that 85% of all pancreatic cancers are diagnosed late when a patient has less than a 2% chance of survival. That's and an incredibly high mortality rate, yeah, pancreatic yeah. cancer. It's the uh, cancer with the worst prognosis. That's right. my uncle. So you have nanotubes. You know, I met Rick mm -hmm. Smalley oh, yeah, years yeah. ago, the guy who, one of the guys who got the Nobel Prize for that. But how do you, okay, how do you configure nanotubes to detect a specific protein? It's actually about as simple as making chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> you start with some water. You pour in the antibody. Then you pour in the nanotube. Then you sonicate it. And then you, you sonicate, sonicate it. Yeah. Sonicate. Uh, that and was then, the step I was missing. <laughs> and then you just take some paper, dip yeah, it, it, and then sonicated. dry it. Is that you like baking it? but different? Yeah, it's pretty much. And you just shake it really, really loudly. 
are really oh, with vigorously. Like ultrasonic. Sound. Yeah, ultrasonic. Ultrasonic yeah. shaking. And what makes it, and so they line up with the antibodies. Yeah, they don't actually have to line up. It's just a random orientation. I'm just dispersing them throughout the solution. And so, so hold on. So you have antibodies attached to nanotubes. They don't have to attach. They just, they just have to be in the environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when the pancreatic ch cancer marker shows up, what happens? Then the protein essentially goes into this network. And it so then it changes its conductivity yeah. because of nanotubes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I man. think you just blew Bill Nye, that the science cool. guy's mind. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Yeah. So, so what are you excited for here today at the White House? I'm really excited to talk with all of the other young researchers because I really love working with other people. And right now I'm actually working on the $10 million Tricorder X Prize. Are you really? And so I'm gathering a team, so looking for some new candidates for it. That's fantastic. If you guys want to join Jack's team, I think he just put out an open call. All right. Well, thank you, Jack. Jack it's great Andraka. to meet you. Wow. Thank you. Cool. Nice Brainiac done, on the loose. <laughs> Nicely done, man. Thank you. Good to meet you, Jack. All right, everybody, we're here at the third White House Science Fair. One of the things that we'll be announcing today are new commitments to the president's Educate to Innovate campaign, which is trying to inspire more kids to get involved with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math uh, education. So what do you guys think the future of STEM is? How do we get more kids like these excited about science? Well, this event is fantastic. Celebrating this, just as LeVar said earlier, just the way you'd have the World Series winner here or the Final Four winner That's here. That's right. You have these people here. Yeah. We have to grow this talent f from the inside. It has to be homegrown talent. We're, if we are to really make good on the promise to educate our nation's children and provide an educated workforce that's going to solve the problems of tomorrow, we have to begin at these lower levels. Well, that's great. So let's meet some of our youngest students here. Hi, guys. How are you? Yeah. Gentlemen, what are your gentlemen, names? Good morning. Yeah, yes. tell us your names. What's your name? Evan Jackson. Evan. Caleb Robinson. Hey, Caleb. Alec Jackson. Alex Jackson. Wow. What did you guys do to get you here today? What's your project? Cool pads. Cool pads. Is that something you wear? Yes, ma'am. And where do you wear it? In football, football. And you can use it in military, in a fighter to fighter, in police. So what is it cool? Is it a cool, a cool pad that you put in the helmet? It's uh, in the shoulder pads. Like it's in it's shoulder like pads. In protective shoulder pads? Yeah. And it has it's Gatorade attached to it that the players can drink out of. So it's basically about keeping them cool and hydrated? Why did you guys come up with that project? Um, to keep athletes from overheating and dying. Did you know somebody that overheated? You did while you were running around at playing sports? When I was in my football game, I overheated. You overheated. So what are you guys most excited for today at the science fair? To see Mr. Barack Obama. Obama. Oh, you're looking forward to seeing the president. You may get a chance to shake hands with them. I, if he I, plays I, I, would, I right. would be shocked if that didn't happen. So how hard was it to build cool pads? Uh, it was medium. Medium hard? Not really hard? Mm -hmm. What was the biggest challenge? What was the biggest challenge you had to making this project a successful Keeping one? Keeping the parts on the, um, our sample together. Keeping the samples the together. The prototype? Yeah. yeah. So you did this with Explorer Vision? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, I hope you guys have fun at the science fair. You guys got any more questions for these kids? Can I get one? Yeah. Yes? Yes, sir. How, how, how soon will it be on the market? Do you know? In 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> 20, so I have to wait a while. Or, or less. That's a good answer. 20 years or less. Well, it's great to meet you guys. Congratulations on being here. Nicely done. Congratulations, fellas. Well done. Well done. Cool. Anyway, the... Uh, Great to see you guys. The idea is an explorer vision. You come up with an invention that you think will come into existence in the next 20 years. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. It's part of the overall effort for science, technology, engineering, and math. It's yeah. great. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. You guys it's look great pretty to sharp. meet you. Take care. All right. So here at the third White today. House Science Fair, mm -hmm. LeVar Burton, mm -hmm. Bill Nye, the science guy, and I are talking to some really amazing winners of science, technology, engineering, and math competitions. We're also talking about ways to get more students interested in STEM. One of those commitments we're announcing today is around US 2020, which is a project to get more mentors helping kids in the STEM field. So tech companies like Sandus, Cisco, Cognizant have made commitments to get 20% of their workforce devoting 20 hours to helping kids uh, get interested in STEM. So thanks to those companies for stepping up and helping kids uh, get interested in STEM. So right now, hi, I see a hurt leg and nice to see you. 
How are you, Brittany? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. So what's your project? So what I did is I created an artificial neural network, which is a type of program that actually models the brain's neurons and interconnections. So it can detect patterns that are far too complex for humans to detect. Now, I applied this to breast cancer because breast cancer inflicts one in eight women. These statistics are just startling. And when you know somebody who has the disease, they're even more personal. Mm. So using my program, the fine needle aspirate, which is the least invasive test, the cheapest and the quickest test, becomes really accurate as well. So my program is 99% sensitive to malignancy, which is huge. And then I deployed it to the cloud because this cloud is just this incredible elastic entity that can scale to support usage by every hospital in the world. Mm. And in the future, I'm proving that the same tactics can also work with leukemia diagnostics and perhaps provide insight on what proteins can be drug targeted. So that is what, amazing. Is this, what is this most reliable test for breast cancer? So traditionally, a lot fine of... Fine needle? Uh, well, the fine needle aspirin is actually so inconclusive that a lot of doctors yes, refuse yeah. to use that. Yeah, yeah. But so the purpose of my project is to really revive the fine needle aspirate so that they can be used again and so they can be accurate. So you just take a few cells... Yeah, it causes the patient about the level of discomfort of a blood test. A few cells are extracted, looked at under a microscope, and then traditionally a doctor would say whether they thought those cells were cancerous or not. But using my program, different wow. attributes are analyzed so that subtle patterns can be picked up. Have you had any response from the, the breast cancer community? Yeah, so it's been really exciting. I won the Google Science Fair, and since then, everybody's been really supportive. Um, I got to speak at breastcancer.org. Wow. Yeah, and Lankenau Medical Center has provided me with more samples. And I'm also working with an institute in Italy to get to test my program's capabilities against 400 samples. Wow. So are you I'm a really, senior? I am. And where are you going to college? I actually just made this decision two days ago. So I'm going to Duke University. I'm going to be part of the AB program. Mm. Yeah, I got, <laughs> yeah, I got a full scholarship and research I'm funding. Awesome. And I'm very awesome. excited didn't see that about that. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you so Good much. For you. My grandfather yes. taught at Duke. Really? Yeah. It's very cool. <laughs> so I've seen you here before on the White House campus. What brought you here last time? So I was also part of Science Talent Search, which is a program that is based on your science potential and as well as your research. So that was a lot of fun. It was an absolutely surreal experience to meet a bunch of other kids who are also into science like I am. So. And post-college, what are you going to do? Um, so I want to be a pediatric oncologist, but probably an MD-PhD sort of situation because I want to do research and primary care. You know what, young lady? You better get a good pair of sunglasses. Your future is so bright, you're going to have to wear shades. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Change the world. Nicely Thanks, Brittany. Done. Great work. Yeah, good to see you again. All right, so what do you guys think the, about well, these? Well, the yeah. doctor would look at it under a microscope, mm -hmm. a skilled technician, and looking for the pattern, but she's got it automated. It's Amazing. brilliant. It's brilliant. Are, are science. You, it is yeah. science. Science. Miracle of science. Yeah. Uh, are you guys ready to meet yet another inspirational yes, absolutely. scientist? Absolutely. Bring it on. Hi, Jonah. Nice to see you. I'm Kristen. Yeah. LeVar and Bill Nye, the I'm science Bill. guy. Good morning, Jonah. How are you? I'm good. Good. So tell us about your project. All right, so my project uses tactile sound to improve the experience of music for people with hearing loss. Wow. Now, What's so tactile, sound? tactile sound? Describe right, tactile sound. Tactile tactile sound is sound through vibrations that are in contact with your body. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So, uh, are we going to get a demo later? Uh, sure, if you want to. Although, um, it does not work for people with normal range hearing, because of something actually actually pretty interesting. You're already hearing the same frequencies through your ears, so your brain kind of discards the tactile information. Interesting. But it is absolutely detectable by someone who does not have that range of hearing yes, already. Yes. Um, at, at one instance, I had one of my subjects. Um, they were they were they were able to hum the melody of a song, even though just, they can't hear it. Even though they can't hear it, just because just through the tactile device. So do people? So I guess then you could look. People who um, who are deaf could learn to speak uh, without that accent or whatever that expression is. That af that um, affect. I think so. I'm not sure. Maybe. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly how much better they are hearing, but but I know that um, my target group from from the experiment, which were cochlear implant users under the age of 55, mm -hmm. they had an improvement of 93 and a half percent. That's a five out of 10 to a 9.675 out of 10 on the quality on the, um, the yeah. one to 10 quality scale I gave them. Is that both speech and music recognition? No, my project was uh, bit, was um, only about music. Only I'm about looking, music. I'm looking into speech as one of uh, as one of my future ventures. Right. But this experience, uh, this experiment was about music, mm -hmm. because um, 
many many people with hearing loss can already can already are already able to communicate. Uh, the ones with cochlear implants can um, can talk fairly well. The ones with hearing aids can also interpret and read speech through lips and hear it. But music, Eludes because there's just so yeah. many frequencies and so many and so many different ranges of everything in music and a lot of things going on at once. Many people with hearing loss can't really experience music the way the way th that we can. So I tried to improve that. So who have you piloted this technology with? Um, I had uh, 14 subjects. Twelve of them had hearing loss. There were six with cochlear implants and six with hearing aids. And what what is, did uh, they think? Has uh, a manufacturer contacted you or a medical... Uh, uh, not yet. I do have it um, for a filed patent, though. Good for well. you. What's next for you after this project? Um, I really, really want to look at the neuroscience of this, see what tactile sound actually does in the brain. So you want somebody to uh, get an MRI while they're listening? Uh, uh, do you use I your hand? What, what? Uh, well, the contact points that I used were the hand, the sternum, and the back of the neck. Hmm. Why did you pick uh, those? Well, they were shown. Um, they were shown to be uh, extremely conductive in previous tactile sound research, and they also are some of the places that wouldn't cause bone conduction. Now, bone conduction. Mm -hmm is um, something kind of similar to tactile right. sound. That's right. But it's really just vibrations going through your skull, moving your eardrums to the same frequencies mm. that you would be hearing the music. Like when a dentist is drilling. Exactly. That would be bone conduction. <laughs> <laughs> None of us like that feeling or that sensation. <laughs> yes. Making the world a better place through science. You rock. You rock. Nicely done. Yeah, man. Congrats, Way Jonah. To Great to see you here. Yeah. See you, little, see you again in a few minutes. Very cool. All right. We're here at the third White House Science <laughs> Fair meeting. Reminds some you a little you've accomplished. <laughs> really mind-blowing students, aren't they? <laughs> it's cool. Amazing. So um, we're going to keep celebrating these students. Next up, super awesome Sylvia. Hey, Sylvia. Good to see you. Hello. Super Hi. awesome Sylvia. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Tell us about your project. Well, I have the watercolor bot. It's a robot that paints with watercolors. It's really neat. Now, I saw a demonstration of this mm -hmm. uh, just, just the other day, and mm -hmm. it's pretty spectacular. How do you program it? Um, my dad did most of the programming, but uh, it, we have a Raspberry Pi, which has a Wi-Fi dongle on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Wi-Fi is connected to the EBB, and uh, the EBB controls the... EBB the, is what? Uh, iBot board. It's, mm -hmm. um, it controls the servo motors and the stepper motors, mm -hmm. which move um, the, pull, the metal rods mm -hmm. and the string around. X, Y... Yeah. yeah, it sends X, Y coordinates to go to different yeah. points. So are you giving a demo of this painting up at the White House Science Fair today? Uh, yes, I'm going to show, I'm probably going to have it. Um, so when you doodle on the iPad, then it's going to doodle on to the ah, paper. Ah, little match move mm -hmm. there. So what's the coolest project you've seen here other than yours so far? Um, I have walked around a little bit. I saw the International Space Station thing where they grab the thing and they put it up. That was pretty cool. The Space Elevator. I love that project. That was really cool. Are you going to join their team next year? I'm not really sure. They were really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so on, the, on your um, XY, um, what do we call it? Watercolor bot? Huh? Watercolor yeah. bot. You can magnify or shrink, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, like mm -hmm. a pantograph, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can write real small and it'll come out real big and so on. Yeah. It's very cool. So, Sylvia, you consider yourself a maker, is that right? Right. So what are makers and how do we get more of them? Um, well, makers are people who like tinkering. They have their own hobbies. They, they like doing uh, their own stuff. And, um, well, just to be a maker, you really get out there and just do something, like actually put something together and, you know, have fun. What are the applications for your robot? What do you mean? Like I mean, how might we use it in, say, a commercial sense? Or would it, would it be developed as a toy? Or would it have a more practical use in the marketplace? Um, well, I was just thinking you would, uh, it's, it's available for kids to program, engineer, and learn how to use robotics. Um, we hope for it to be a kit uh, later on in late May. Um, uh, I just, like, really want to inspire kids out there to just make something. So what you've created is a teaching tool. Yeah, yeah. practically. Good for you. Well done. So what are you going to build next after this device? Not really sure. We're pretty busy. Um, but I hope to uh, kind of hack my uh, RC helicopter and have some fun with it. A hacked RC helicopter. Mm, that sounds fun. Will you send us a video when you do it? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the helicopter will it. be taking a video of you and, and transmitting it to you. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Great to meet you. Congratulations. Thanks. Nicely done. It's just great. It's great.
So makers like Sylvia are going to get some new opportunities to uh, play and make at new maker spaces that the Maker Education Initiative is helping to set up. That's one of the commitments to STEM and our Educate to Innovate initiative we're going to see today. So who's our next student we get to meet? Hi, I'm Kristen. Shaquisha. Shaquisha, good to meet you. Shaquisha, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're from Chicago. Yes. Yay, represent. <laughs> Tell us about your project. Um, I have developed an app called Baby Be For Me. It's a mobile application that create that connects parents and care providers outside of each other's presence. Wow. So is what it does it have a camera? What does it do? Um, it has a real-time chart update, a support net list, video, and text. Um, the chart is where the parent goes in and put information such as take a nap and at what time they want to want their child to do this activity, and the care provider marks off um, when the activity is done, and the parent can check the chart All at any from, time. from uh, my phone. Yes. So how long have you been coding? I have been coding since my freshman year of high school, so about 14. How did you get interested? My school, actually, Chicago Tech Academy, um, they teach us Cody from the first day we walk in through the door. So. The Chicago Tech Academy? Yes. Where is that? It's on the it's, um, southwest side of Chicago. On the southwest side. It's a fairly new school. It's, um, going, this is, it's his first, fourth year, first graduating class. You're in the first graduating class? No. No? <laughs> no I'm only a junior. Wow. All right. One more it's year pretty, before yeah. you pretty inherit cool. the senior status. So yes. what, uh, what language do you code in? Um, I code in Objective C, but I've also used HTML, C, uh, C Sharp, uh, CSS. So, so what do you want to do if you go to college? You want computer science? Is that your thing? It's not my first, but What's I would. What's your first? What's your first love? <laughs> um, my first love is nursing. I just love children, which is the idea behind the yes, app. Yes, right. Um, but I would like to get a minor in computer programming. I have no doubt that that is in your future. Oh <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> what inspired you to build this app in the first place? Well, when I used to babysit my nephew for the first, well, the first time I babysat my nephew, um, his mom left so fast that she didn't leave a note, and I knew that he was on a schedule. Right. I just didn't know what the schedule was. So um, she came back to pick him up, and she uh, asked, what time did he take his nap, which is why I keep saying nap. Yeah. Um, and when I saw her, she just was so frustrated because he was going to be up all night. So... Um, I realized that I, I knew that I wasn't the only person being faced with this problem, so I just decided to make an app for it and solve the problem. How many lines of code in this app? A um, hundred, a thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand? <laughs> Between a hundred and a thousand. Yeah. It just depends on what uh, type of thing you want to do. So. so how do you think we get more girls interested in coding? Well, at my school, we have a 50-50 ratio between boys and girls, and I believe that all the girls at my school are interested in coding. Mm -hmm. So just come to Chicago Tech Academy. Come to Chicago Tech. Go to a good school. Oh, yeah. I like that answer. So all thank right. you. What are you looking forward to at White House Science Fair today? I'm looking forward to networking with other, st other students that have an interest in me and presenting my business to the president. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Shaquisha, congratulations. That's just cool. Way to go, Shaquisha. Amazing. Thank good you. for you. Good for you. All right, we're still here at the third White House Science Fair. First time we've been live from the Science Fair. I'm here with LaVar Burton and Bill Nye, the science guy. What do you guys think so far of these I'm blown projects? away. I, so I, so, I, so I, I, I wanted my nephew to take a nap, so I wrote a thousand lines of computer code. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course you did. It's just cool. It's fantastic. Yeah. I am not an engineer. I play one on TV. I barely understand what most of these kids are talking about. <laughs> um, very impressive. Very yeah. impressive. So the president is going to get a chance to look at the 30 exhibits that are here today, and I know he will also be blown away mm -hmm. and is very committed to seeing more students pursuing STEM through our Educate to Innovate initiative. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think we can do to spread the word about these types of programs that are out there and get more kids involved in, in these types of STEM programs? Well, this is exactly what we should be doing, mm -hmm. is having events like this, celebrating it. So celebrating it, So that people want to be involved and want to try it. So if you're out there and you have a, a mind for science, get busy. Uh, there'll be another one of these next year. You could be here at the White House showing off your project to the executive branch. And we hope that you continue to spread the word about the Science Fair today using uh, the hashtag White House Science Fair. Spread the word. How are you guys Good morning. doing? I'm Kristen. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Julie. Julie. Spencer. Spencer, great to meet you. Where, Where are you all from? Yeah. West culture. Michigan. Williamston, Michigan. Williamston, Michigan. Yeah. Tell us about your project. Um, well, we've created the Orca system. It's a buoy that is designed to detect rip currents in the Great Lakes. And so are you demonstrating it in a tank today? 
Um, no, we, we didn't get to uh, bring our tank today, but we have tested our um, actual flow meter and everything, so we know that that is operational. And have you deployed it in the lake? Uh, no, we've not deployed not. it in the lake yet. It's still a work in progress. At this point, the only thing that's been in the water is the flow meter. What's the value and benefit of the technology that you've invented? Well, last year, over 100 people drowned in the Great Lakes, mm -hmm. and almost wow. a third of those were due to rip currents. Really? Yeah. And so our invention is designed to help save so those lives So these are people year. swimming near shore, mm -hmm. and they get swept out. Yeah, and you can't see rip currents from the surface of lakes, which is what catches people off guard because often they're just swimming along, and they look up, and they're in the middle of the lake, and mm -hmm. they panic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the idea would be to deploy a couple of these in any given lake area, and that, that information would feed back to the lifeguard staff on shore? Well, our buoy is actually a modified swim area buoy or swim area marker, and so the idea is to replace the current swim area markers on public beaches. And each of the buoys is a standalone system, and so um, when it detects a rip current, it just lights up the light on top and um, beeps a siren. And so each each buoy on the um, along the lake, you'll know exactly where the how rip far current apart is. are the. Um, we are thinking about 40 feet apart. That's typical for a swim area. Right. So if a person's getting swept out, whoop, 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 he or she knows that everybody knows. Yeah, get that, out of there. <laughs> well, go plus, over there. Uh, maybe then alert somebody on shore to come help. That right? too, right. yeah. The so whole thing is to swim sideways. That's mm -hmm. the deal. To get and, out. And not yeah. get sucked out to sea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how did you guys get inspired to build this? Is this part of a program you got involved with at school? Um, yeah, we are actually a part of the Lemos and MIT Invent Team program. And um, an event team are groups of students, teachers, and mentors. And uh, we are awarded up to $10,000 to make our inventions a reality. Wow, that's amazing. And so it's partner organizations like that that help students like you get a chance to get hands-on with science and technology. What kind of science and tech had to go into this project? What did you use in terms of science, technology, engineering, and math skills? Well, there's a lot of electrical systems on the buoy. Our sensor is, um, or our flow meter, we have to send a signal to electronics box and process the signal, um, figure out when there's a rip current and when there isn't. And it looks like it's solar powered. It is. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. also solar powered, so you can just leave it in the lake for all year. But there's a uh, power, then there's a battery system probably. Yep, and total right. battery. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's it got to be durable. Oh yeah, with the waves. I hope. Water yeah. And cor cor corrosive, uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, insulated, yes? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now, um, it's mostly designed just for the Great Lakes, which is freshwater. Um, mm. But the plan in the future is to also adapt it for saltwater, salt because salt there's a lot of rip currents in the oceans mm. as well. Right. So is this your first time at the White House? Yes. <laughs> yes. Are you excited? Oh, yeah. So exciting. <laughs> what are you excited for? Um, just everyone, all these young people that are getting involved in science, because um, being from a smaller community, we don't get to see this kind of stuff often. And it's great to see everyone that's getting involved. The president may get a chance to shake your hand. I mean, that's yeah, pretty exciting, too, I guess. That guy, <laughs> he, he can hope. He can dream. What I can't get over, Kristen, is the diversity of science programs that are represented here. In these projects, absolutely. What's the name of yours again? Sorry, it's going real fast. Lemelson MIT Invent Team. Invent Team. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Making ideas a reality through that $10,000, huh? Yeah. So what year are you in? Uh, you're in high school. I'm a freshman at Michigan State University. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm a senior at Williamson High School. Yeah. Where are you planning to go to school? Well, I'm um, waitlisted at the school that I'd like to go to. So if anyone from the University of Chicago is watching right now, <laughs> I would go. really love to be a part of your school. Come on, school. admissions, get on the <laughs> stick. She's a Chicago guy, yeah? <laughs> She's Come at on. the White what, House. What, what do you need? She's at the White House. <laughs> What time is it, Mark? They'll call any minute. That's yeah. right. They'll be calling. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoy the nice weather out here today. You guys are in the East Garden. Get to hang out outside and demonstrate your project outside. Um, and so I hope you have a great trip to D.C. It's been great to meet you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations to both of you. Whoa, Congratulations. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hi, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Uh, hi, guys. Welcome. How are you liking the third White House Science Fair? And your name? I'm Kiana Elliott. Hi, Kiana. Hi. I'm Peyton Carr. And Peyton. Peyton, Peyton and it's good to meet you. The, the Limos, uh, MIT you're the Limos MIT Invent Team. High School, Limos and MIT Invent MIT. Team. Northeast High School, where? In Oakland Park, Florida. Ah, I see. So tell us about your project. 
Um, we can actually show you our project if you want to see. Yes. Awesome. Couldn't We're going to walk right Couldn't over here, guys. We're hopeful. Come on. Wow. Buckets Nobody of water. trip on any wires. Here, turn around and let the camera oh. see you. Uh, please <laughs> turn invention, Our invention is an emergency water sanitation station. Basically, the idea of it is to provide clean water for tropical areas in the event of a natural disaster, such as Haiti or really any tropical area. Why does it have to be tropical? Well, um, we made it for tropical areas because it was actually designed after the hurricane, uh, or not the hurricane, but the earthquake that happened in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Our team member was a, a mission group there. Mm -hmm. And so we were thinking more because we're in Florida and hurricanes are a big problem there and in a lot of other tropical areas. Mm -hmm. So it's really designed to be an emergency water system for tropical areas after a hurricane. It's bicycle powered. Love yes. that. We so show us how it works. Yeah, walk, us, walk us through the process. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stepping back. Well, um, one thing you did mention was that the bicycle powers the whole thing. We have a hub motor here on the back of the bicycle, which um, charges the battery we have, which charges or powers everything here in the electrical box. Mm -hmm. It starts over here where you can add water into this 200 and 100 um, micron mesh. Mm -hmm. That'll filter out basically sand and sticks and Large other different things. Mm -hmm. Then it's pumped through this box and into that container over there. When it's being pumped through the box, it um, is being sanitized by a ozone generator here. And once it gets inside the box, the second ozone generator is turned on to continue cleaning the water so it's not recontaminated. Wow. So uh, why this big uh, metal container, enclosure? Well, the big container Face the camera, is, face the camera. Oh, Please face the camera. <laughs> um, the big container is basically the way... All of this is easily transportable. Oh, it can collapses. break down, it collapses, yeah. and can be placed inside of this container. And then we close it up, and not only does our bike power our system, but it can also transport our system. It could be hitched to this big ah. trailer thing and then taken to whatever area that you need it to That's be. That's ingenious. It's a Thank delivery you. system and a filtration system in one. It can also charge cell phones or any electric, um, electricity, electricity that you need. So if you need a laptop, I don't know why you need a laptop in the middle of an area, but uh, for who doesn't want to be connected these days? Yeah, plus it's, <laughs> absolutely. You want to yeah. be who doesn't want to be connected? Online, if you can, you want to be connected. So and that's uh, run off the battery as well. Mm -hmm. All of it, and the battery is just rechargeable straight from the bike. And this is all commercially available stuff, so it's yes. going to be high reliability. We mm -hmm. think. Where Ingenious. Did, is this in commercially available? This crazy yeah, we just bucket? bought it right offline. The only thing we added to it was the mesh filters, mm. which we um, kind of designed after a um, embroidery. embroidery hoop. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We took inspiration. Our, our box is actually designed after a pizza box. 14 teenagers working over a box of pizza. Things happen. <laughs> <laughs> pizza while boxes they're, while as they're inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eating pizza and needle pointing. Well done. It's, it's Thank cool. you. Well so done. You're, you identified a need and you addressed it. Yes. And any minute is going to come up. Has anybody approached you about manufacturing these things? Well, we actually talked to the Red Cross about it. We still have to get back to them and answer some of their questions. But also a missionary group approached us. They wanted to use it on their next mission trip. Fantastic. Amazing. All right, guys. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so <laughs> much. We, we see we're all speechless. <laughs> Whoa. We're glad you were in high school. We're oh, so oh, impressed. Oh. So, so what are you guys going to do next post-science fair? Well, um... We, I'm graduating. <laughs> Where are you going to go to school? I'm going to the plan? University of Florida. Oh, great. Yeah. And you? Oh, I'm not graduating yet, but um, I'm still a junior. I plan to continue this. I really want to make it available to the third world countries after disasters so that we can not just make it, but actually have it put into use. We're trying to get into awesome. contact with the Red Cross more so that we they can actually um, mass produce this and then have their groups whenever there's a, a disaster, they can just take this along with them. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate you showing us your project. Great to meet you. Most impressive. Yeah. Take Most care. Most impressive. Congratulations, ladies. Cool. Change Congratulations. the world. Congratulations. Changing the world with science. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Well, thank you for joining us from the first live webcast of the White House Science Fair. Thank you, LeVar Kristen. and Bill, for joining us. It's been great. It's an honor. Keep watching. We're going to have more coverage of the White House Science Fair today and spread the news with Hashtag White House Science Fair. White Thanks House for Science us. Fair. Peace, y'all.